Welcome back to In Ohio Country Today. Dan Wilson alongside of Mark Bohr, General Manager of Poet here in Lipsick, Ohio. And first, let me say thank you so very much for your sponsorship to our uh, television show. No, thank you, Dan. We really appreciate the exposure and welcome to Poet Bauer Finding Lipsick. I was here when uh, you guys first opened up, and it's amazing the number of changes that have gone on. Let's talk yeah. a little bit about the development from you. You first broke ground here in Lipsick and where you guys are at today. It is. We've been, uh, we started up in January of 2008. Uh, since then, we've hired 42 people. We've got 42 team members, largely uh, local uh, people that um, were able to join us here locally. Uh, we've also done a lot for the local economy. As you know, we chew up a lot of corn out there. We'll grind about 24 million bushels of corn per year. We buy that locally. And what that does, as you know, it provides support for the farmer. They get a little bit better basis and really puts money in agriculture's pocket. When you talk about economic development, too, you're not just buying corn, but the facility itself, you know, you have the electricity and the water. Yep. There's a lot of utilities, a lot of things that go into the process. Just take a moment here and let's, let's explain that process uh, to our viewers, especially those who aren't aware how ethanol is produced. Be happy to. First of all, what we do is we take the corn and we remove only the starch from the corn. And this is something that many of your viewers may not be aware of. We always hear the food versus fuel debate. All we're doing is removing the starch from the corn. So the really high value component of the corn, which is the fat, and the protein gets returned to the feed supply. So all we're doing is removing that starch. And that's important because that starch then goes, or excuse me, that uh, protein and fat goes back into the feed supply. So we're really not eliminating it from the feed supply. You know, Mark, one of the things too that's uh, unique about the particular process is also the byproducts that come from yeah. this process. We're not just producing ethanol here, but let's talk about the benefits of the byproducts that come from this production. That's correct. It's called distillers dry grains with solubles. So essentially what we're doing, as I mentioned, we're taking that high value component and we're drying it and we're returning it back to the feed supply. And it's, it's actually at a premium, uh, the, it's, excuse me, it's, it's less cost than uh, corn. So the feeders who are feeding that to their feedstocks are actually getting a cheaper cost. So it's, it's, it's very advantageous from that aspect also. You know, one of the things that you mentioned too is uh, the debate over fuel and food. Let's talk once again about the type of product that you get in here to make ethanol. It's not, yep. the, it's not the type of corn that we're feeding our families on the dinner table. That is correct. Less than 10 percent of the number two yellow corn that we use is actually consumed by humans. So the rest of it uh, has to go into the feed supply or some other avenue. We do export some. Really what ethanol has done for the nation and for the corn farmer is as the corn farmer continues to grow more and more corn per acre year after year, ethanol has come along and we're providing a market for that excess corn. Uh, as you know, in the past, corn prices were always depressed simply because we had more corn than we needed. So ethanol is kind of filling that gap. You know, a couple of years ago when, uh, when uh, Poet and various other entities were moving into Ohio and expanding their ethanol production. It just so happened we went through a uh, increase in uh, gasoline prices mm -hmm. and uh, a lot of people were trying to point their fingers yes. at, at ethanol as uh, helping to drive up uh, the costs uh, for the consumers out there and let's dispel that myth right now. I'd love to. Uh, it, it's just it's not factual. In fact, the World Bank, who's uh, you know, no lover of ethanol in the past, came out and said that the, the contention that was made back in 2008 that ethanol drove up the cost of corn and drove up the cost of food simply was not true. So they came out and made, corrected that. But again, as I just mentioned, what we're doing is we're taking out only the starch. We're re replacing all that uh, protein and fat back into the feed supply. So. Uh, really what the main driver is, and this is the, what's interesting, there's irony here, is that the main driver of the cost of food is really transportation fuels, uh, oil. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. You know, one of the things, too, that I'm, I'm very proud of is the fact that I do drive an E85 vehicle. And uh, talk about dispelling some of the myths. I mean, when I drive and uh, go to various locations uh, throughout the state of Ohio, most of the time there's a 50% discount or a uh, uh, 60 cents sometimes per gallon mm -hmm. less 
than what people are paying for uh, the average price of, of regular gasoline. So when you factor that into uh, a fill-up, um, basically the miles per gallon and, and everything yep. else that's involved, I'm actually making money. You, you are, and there is something of a trade-off at different blend levels. But the really exciting thing that we're seeing happening is, as many of your viewers may not be aware, currently the nation as a whole is using about 10%, approaching 10% of the fuel supply is ethanol. And where we're going now, the EPA has just approved E15. In fact, NASCAR is using E15 in all its races this year. And what that means is cars 2001 and newer can use E15. It uh, does not need to be labeled any differently. Uh, it just needs to be uh, consumed in a vehicle without, you know, there's, there's, there's nothing, no impact to the vehicle. The people who don't know they're using 10% will not know they're using 15% also. And what we see as a wave of the future is blender pumps. And what blender pumps do is they permit the consumer to select the amount of fuel or the type of fuel that they want to use. If they want to use ethanol, they can select the level of ethanol that they want. If they don't want to use ethanol, then they can select using a petroleum-based fuel. And because ethanol is the lowest cost transportation fuel right now, and because it's top performer, we believe that the market will pull the ethanol demand that we need. That's what really the industry needs right now is more demand. You know, one of the things, too, that uh, has been uh, a myth that I'd like to dispel, too, is the, uh, the fact that a lot of people who aren't familiar with ethanol and how it's produced is uh, the uh, blender's credit. Um, a lot of people like to point to the ethanol uh, companies and say, you guys are getting uh, various types of uh, government breaks in, mm -hmm. in your taxes, but basically there's a blender's credit that's involved in there that actually gets passed on to the consumer. That's part of the discount yep. that I pay. That's exactly right. And really a lot of exciting things happening on that front also. Uh, again, as, as your viewers may not know, that blender's credit actually does not go to the ethanol industry or companies. It goes to the oil companies that blend the ethanol in, in uh, it's essentially a tax credit. And that's what I was trying to get mm -hmm. at. You know, they, they, the general public has been told by people who oppose ethanol yep. that ethanol, they're, they're getting subsidies, when in reality, the majority of what that represents is that blender's credit. That's correct. So what the industry is doing, and this is what's exciting, is we've got a plan called Fueling Freedom. And what we're proposing is that we phase that um, subsidy out, if you will, the, the tax credit out over time. And as we're phasing that out, redirect some of the funds for infrastructure so that we can have the infrastructure that will permit these consumers to get the fuel that they want for their vehicles. And so we would displace uh, some of that that cost with these infrastructure costs and what that's going to do is again all we want to do is to let the consumer decide at the pump and so we're, we're really excited about where that's going you know we talk about the product itself you know the the win situation is not only the fact that it's it's bringing back and creating jobs here in the united mm -hmm. states but the environmental aspect of it too is is very positive let's talk about that it is. It burns 59% cleaner than gasoline based on petroleum. It, that's just factual. And really, again, the technology is developing so rapidly. The, where we're going and where the industry and the technology is taking us is just uh, extremely exciting. The ethanol plant of the future can very easily, as you probably know, our, our company is going the cellulosic uh, route of production using corn cobs. So we could potentially be buying corn cobs from local farmers in the future. And where that could actually take us is we could be producing here in Lipsick, Ohio, we could be producing corn-based ethanol, we could be producing cellulosic ethanol from corn cobs, we could be replacing our natural gas usage from the lignin and the remnants of the corn cobs, which can't be used for feed by putting those into a solid fuel boiler and our energy would then come from that corn. And it, it's exciting because what that does in terms of uh, environmental impact is truly significant. Well, the future is bright for ethanol. There's no question about it. it. And we certainly appreciate uh, Poet's investment here in Ohio. Before we let you go, let's talk a little bit about the company and why they chose to come to Ohio. And uh, as you mentioned, the future mm -hmm of uh, such things as uh, cellulosic and, and various types of 
ways of producing this particular product. Be happy to. Poet is the world's largest producer of ethanol. We produce about 1.7 billion gallons of ethanol per year from 27 plants located throughout the Midwest. Uh, Ohio has three plants, one in Lipsick, one in Fostoria, and one in Marion. And we're on the eastern edge of the Corn Belt, but Ohio is really well positioned, has a geographic advantage in terms of the fact we're also very close to the end user. So much of the fuel that gets blended with ethanol is blended here in Ohio or in the surrounding areas. So there's a, a transportation cost advantage that's associated with it. And what's really interesting for Ohio is, is that the farmers in the past, first of all, Ohio has been one of the leading blenders of ethanol, although we always had to get our ethanol from out west. Now we're producing it in state. And the farmers who were in the past, they would grow the corn, and essentially because there was not a, a large enough end user base here, would ship it down south or somewhere else. And what that did is that, again, it's business, as that corn touched numerous hands to get to the end user, uh, there's a cost associated with that. So by virtue of the fact we're here, we're using corn 24-7, uh, 365 days a year, the local farmers are getting a premium for their corn. So it's putting money into the local economy through that route also. You know, what's really interesting is that the, the old time school of manufacturing technique still holds true. I mean, where the steel industry was is where the automotive mm -hmm. uh, industry grew, and the same thing holds true here. You know, the products that you use are, are you know, bringing your manufacturing process to where that product is. So it's uh, it's very exciting time. Uh, before we let you go, you're a Putnam County boy that made good. Let's I talk am. about your background and what brought you here to Poet. Um, actually, it was just a fantastic opportunity. Um, again, being from Putnam County, both my wife and I, and we got two girls, uh, we wanted to come back home from Atlanta about 15 years ago, and I was with Cummins Filtration for some time. Had the opportunity to do a startup here, had done a couple overseas, and really the opportunity to get local people, create local jobs, uh, and with the technology we have here was just, just a tremendous opportunity, so it's worked out well for us. As a general manager, you probably wear a lot of different hats around this place. Let's talk a little bit about some of the, some of the responsibilities that you have in a facility like this. It's really just getting the capability out of this incredible tool that we've been given. We're fortunate in this plant uh, that we turned it on and immediately started producing at a high level. Um, we've got a, just a fantastic team. Many of the team members that started with us three and a half years ago are still here. And so it's really just making sure that we continue to work as a team and get the most out of the technology that's available to us. Mark, once again, we appreciate your sponsorship on In Ohio Country today, and I would be remiss if I didn't mention Mike Kniven for his support and helping us uh, pull off yep. this broadcast. Mike does a good job for us, uh, all the local farmers know him. Uh, it's, it's tremendous to have someone who knows the local people, knows the farmers, knows the corn market like he does. He, he does good work for me. Keeps Once me again, going. Mark, if people want more information about Poet, where can they go? Um, yeah, poet.com is, is a great resource, but I would also encourage if you're, you're looking at the industry, growthenergy.org is a, it's a great site where people can get the facts that yes. you and I have discussed, mm -hmm. um, and it dispels all these myths and also gives them an opportunity to engage. Uh, there's growthforce.org, which lets everyone have a voice in this, because it is so important. We're talking energy independence here, we're talking national security, we're talking local economy, we're talking our environment some pretty important topics. Amen. Amen. Yep. Hit the nail on the head. And if you want more information, too, you can always check us out on the web. We'll have a link to those sites at inohiocountry.com.